warm welcome into Sports Talk with Theo Dorsey, South Georgia. Let's talk sports. It's the final week of the regular season in Georgia High School Association basketball, but don't fret. Region tournaments are next up, and the playoffs, they're right around the corner. That's right. Later in the show, we'll let you know which schools will be hosting each tourney, but first, we've got to tease our latest Sports Talk guest. Marcus Shaw is the guiding voice that leads the Calhoun County boys basketball team, currently rated as the top team in the area. They're a favorite to compete for the single A state championship. Shaw played his high school ball in Edison and continued his playing career at Georgia Southwestern State University. It was in Americas that he was inspired to pick up the clipboard and coach. Shaw joins the show to explain that experience and discuss his 21-2 Cougars basketball team. But first, let's hand out the awards. Appreciate that, Mike. Well, it goes without saying at this point that the first honor goes to the person who spent the past week brightening up the eyes of South Georgia fans. Kamatarius Bird of Pelham High had been averaging 10 points per game but exploded in three wins this past week. Bird scored a season-high 22 in the win over Mitchell County on Friday. He dropped a cool 17 in Saturday's win over Seminole County, and he had two steals in each of his last three games to go along with four total blocks. Bird is your shining star of the week. All right, Theo, I'll raise you one because basketball is a team sport. And while Theo's out here to give you individual awards, I'm here to honor to present the team award. Tiff County boys team clinched the one seed in their region, making them squad gold. The Blue Devils are undefeated through five games in Region 1 7A and will be the one seed in the next weekend's regional tournament. Tiff County took down both two tough teams this week. They beat Cockwood County by 10 points at home Friday, and Saturday they took to the road to defeat Coffee. That gave the Blue Devils season sweeps over both highly regarded programs. It also ensured them the top seed in the region tournament in which they will host. Most importantly, Chris Wade's Blue Devils are squad goals this week on Sports Talk. That's Mike, that's, that's <laughs> very special. That's very special stuff. And you, you're right, they've been great. And I wonder where that will place them in the rankings. Only one way to find out. Here it is, the Sports Talk South Georgia basketball power rankings. On the boys' side, the top three remain the same from last week. No slip-ups. Calhoun County, America Sumter, and Thomasville each took care of business. The Cougars and Panthers each have gotten over the 20-win mark this year, and Thomasville will look to do so Friday night at Fitzgerald. Number four, Tiff County jumped up two spots from last week. As aforementioned, the Blue Devils capped off wins over Colquitt County and Coffee, and they got that number one seed in the region tournament that they'll be hosting. Westover at number five, they slipped. But they're still uh, the leader in Region 1 Quad A. If they win out over Carver and America Sumter, well, they'll be hosting that region tournament as well. And Pelham has been nothing short of impressive. I saw them out in Mitchell County's gym. The Hornets railed off five straight wins right now, liking what I'm seeing out of the Hornets. Let's take a look at the girls' rankings. We have a few, a group of new queens atop the standings. Pelham swipes the top spot from Bainbridge. The defending state champions, Lady Hornets improved to 22 and 1. Now Bainbridge was without Nadia Marshall, their leading scorer for a game last week in which they lost at Warner Robins. They slipped to number two and I'm eating what they're cooking out at Lowndes. The Vikettes are undefeated in the region, including a recent win over reigning region champs Colquitt County. Speaking of the Lady Pack, they go in at number four. They get another shot at Lowndes this weekend. That'll be an exciting matchup in fifth. Terrell County, the Lady Green Wave had an impressive win over Pelham, liking what Tammy Jenkins is doing over there and that was it right there. Actually, we got Westover coming in at the honorable mention, so we'll see uh, what happens with the Lady Patriots. They're 19 and four right now. And before we give you the top three options for this week, it's time to tip our caps to the highlight that was voted as the showstopper play of the week. <laughs> Westover hosting Cairo last week. Check out Cameron Weston. He's going to blow by some defenders right here and slams it to the hoop. Weston earned 242 votes on Facebook. The Patriots would go on to win the game. And of course, Weston wins the showstopper play of the week for his high-flying theatrics in the Boston Garden. Uh, that was impressive. But now for this week's plays that were showstoppers in their own rights. You have three options and only a few days to vote. Hop on my Facebook page, Theo Dorsey, WALB News 10 and let your voice be heard. Option one, Mitchell County hosted Pelham Friday night. Kemonterius Bird, we talked about him earlier. He led the game in scoring and soaring. 
Check out the block. He sends that ball to the third row in the stands. The fans remind the Eagles where that ball went in case they forgot. Bird was the thriller in Camilla on Friday night. To vote for this play, react with love on Facebook. All right, option number two, Tift County hosted Cockwood County Friday as well. There's no four-point line in basketball yet, but there are four-point plays. Monte Terrell with the James Harden S step-back three-pointer taking to the ground there. He nails it, plus the fall. Check it out again right here as the Blue Devil creates just enough space. React with a wow on Facebook to vote for this play. All right, well, option three, Doherty hosted Chris County. I like the dance moves. Carlos Curry, he's 6'11", and Chris County had nothing for him. The spin, the slam, Mike, they call that catching a body, and that's what the Trojan did. React on Facebook with Ha Ha to vote for Curry's new poster on Facebook. Voting lasts until Tuesday at 5 p.m. Now we get to where the coaches are concerned with around South Georgia. The region basketball tournaments, they decide the seating for the postseason, and for some regions, Regular season play determines who will host each year. Let's take a look at that. In Region 1 single A, they're going to be at ASU West Campus as always. Region 2 single A, the girls winner will decide it. And right now it's between Telfair County and Wilcox County. In Region 1 double A, Early County girls, they have won and clinched the regular season region, so they will be hosting the tournament for both boys and girls again. And in Region 1 3A, Cook has clinched, and they will be hosting uh, again these region tournaments February 6th through 10th. Let's look at Region 1 4A. The boys winner will win it, and right now it's between America Sumter, Carver, and Westover. It's a three-way battle, and those teams will be playing each other in this final week, so stay tuned with that one. Region 1 5A, the Warner Robins boys have clinched the regular season. That means that Warner Robins will play host to the region tournament in 1 5A. And Region 1 6A, the girls winner will take it. Right now it's between Valdosta and Lee County. Two of the teams, or not Lee County, Valdosta actually, and can I remember it off the top of my head? Valdosta and... Another team. We'll find out and we'll tell you guys on the next Sports Talk. Of course, that's going to be a good battle. And then in Region 1, 7, 8, they do it by alphabetical order through the years. And this year, it's Tiff County's turn to host. Hopefully, oh, you know what? It was coffee. I'm glad I remembered that while we're still here. So, Mike, take over. All right, yeah, thanks, Theo. Thomasville's own Reggie Perry is one step closer to competing against some of the best high school basketball players in the country. Perry was given an honorary game jersey ahead of the McDonald's All-American Games. 24 of the country's top boys and girls basketball players will go head-to-head -head in March, including Perry. The event aims to pin the best against the best, as we said, and does that by narrowing down two teams of 12 from more than 700 nominees nationwide. And Calhoun County has made the Elite Eight of the state playoffs each of the past four seasons, and they're coming off of a second-place finish in the state last year. Marcus Shaw joins Sports Talk after the break for some trivia and more. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. And as you can see, Marcus Shaw has joined us here. Welcome to the show, Coach. Thanks a lot. Yeah, appreciate thanks, it. Thanks for having thanks me. For, uh, thanks for having me on. I guess for thanks for uh, showing up here and, and being a guest for us, not having No me. problem. <laughs> Definitely. All right. He's been the leader of Calhoun County since 2010, and he's always Theo, and as always, Theo here yeah, that's me. is going to give his coaching resume to us. That's Let's right. Go, Theo. That's right. Well, we've made enough slip-ups. Let's get right to the man that doesn't make too many slip-ups. Coach Shaw, an Edison native, and he actually was a Cougars basketball player before he was a coach. He went on to graduate from Calhoun County in 2001. And he played some ball at Georgia Southwestern, but let's take a look at his actual coaching stints. From 06 to 2009, he was an assistant at Randolph Clay under the legendary Joe Williams for two seasons and Tyrone Kellogg for another and the folk in Edison had seen enough. They called Shaw up, and he earned the Calhoun County head coaching job in 2010. He's since won a state championship in the 2014-15 season, won two Region 1 single-A titles, and has had six 20-win seasons, including the one that he's in right now. His Cougars, 21-2 and two right now, but enough pumping him up. It's time for me to take him down in some trivia, and he brought his, uh, his trophies, by the way, to try and intimidate me, but it's not going to work. I see, we already have, we have an indicator of, of the first and second place trophies, but let's, don't let that weigh on your mind. We oh. like to call it Theo versus everyone, because gotcha. that's what happens. Theo takes on every coach we have. It's pretty simple. I'll ask you guys a series of questions. You just buzz in to answer. Okay. If you get it right, you get a ball. The person with the most at the end wins. Gotcha. All right, let's do this. All right, these first couple questions, I'll give you a this or that choice. Uh, you, have to, you have to pick one, and that will be the answer. Perfect. All right, the GHSA State Basketball Tournament will be played at the Macon Centerplex and Georgia Tech McCamish Pavilion. Which can seat more people? Oh. That's a tie. We give it to Coach. <laughs> Georgia Tech. Actually, it's the Macon Centerplex, oh, but it's just by this much. Okay. All right, we're going to keep rolling through here. 
What percentage of corner three-pointers do NBA teams make on average? Is it 40% or 20%? 40, come on. Yes, sir. Let's get that, 40, man. that's right. Yeah. All right, first blood, Theo. All right, who's won the NBA slam dunk contest the most? Is it Dominique Wilson or Nate Robinson? Dominique Wilkins. No. Nate, come on. <laughs> Something was telling me that. Yeah, he, he did. He, All right. I, I, I should have got that one. I got to tune in more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's, it's a slim lead right now. We're going to go into a different type of question where I just ask, ask you guys the question, and you have to come up with the answer on your own. Okay. Right. okay. All right. In what city were the Los Angeles Lakers initially based? Minneapolis. Let's go, man. That's, I'm hoping. That's true. I'm hoping. All right. Yeah, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How long is a regulation NBA game? 48 minutes. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Yes, right. sir. He's in it. Yeah, you you get to put a ball in there now. Got one right. You're not used to that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, according to these trophies. Oh, I'd say it's, it's if I win, we're going to swap. I'm going to get the first player. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good deal. What former player was the inspiration for the NBA logo? Me? Uh, J- yeah. West. Oh, yes, sir. Man. It was a tie. It was a tie. I, I gave, gave it to him. It. He's a guest. You get another one. All right. You get, to, you get another ball, That's and that right. ties That's things right. up, actually. Two balls now, okay? Two at two. All right. Which team won the first national invitational tournament in 1938? They're going to get harder and harder. Jesus. They might not it get harder than up. this. <laughs> I was about to say, NIT, let's see. Yeah. 1938, first UCLA. team. UCLA. No. We'll go with Kansas. Nope. It was Temple. 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 Wow. Yeah. yeah. You guys, I'm, I'm shocked you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I'm sorry. All right. Right. What was the last country to get a gold medal in basketball at the Olympics that wasn't the United States? Argentina. Manu. No. No? No. It wasn't Argentina? Wow. Man, this is for the men's oh, team. Oh, yeah. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Was it Italy? It was Spain. No, it was, it was the Soviet Union. Are you sure? Yeah, that's What about the redeem team? Okay, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. All, right, all right, it's cool. All right, we're going to keep going. This is, our, this is actually our last question right now. Okay. It's typically worth two points. It doesn't necessarily matter this time because everything's tied up right now, okay. but it's all coming down to this. All right, in which Chinese city will you find a statue of Stefan Marbury? Uh, 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 Tokyo. Oh, I'm tripping. <laughs> I was trying to think of the capital. Hong that- Kong, Hong Kong. Okay, well, there's a lot wrong with okay, what you yeah. just said, because Tokyo is in Japan, know, and Hong Kong, well, that's, that's complicated, but... <laughs> okay, you know what? Do you have any guesses? Because those are both very wrong. As much as I watched that documentary, I can't remember. I don't know but can't remember. It's in, you all, you're guessing every other city. It's in Beijing. Beijing, oh, that's it. Beijing. So, Beijing. there's going to be no transfer of trophies, because hey, we got a tie. I might have to that's challenge that Argentina one. I might have to challenge that Yeah, okay, okay. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, that's cool. Great, great, right. Good job, Coach. You're Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. You get to keep that first place trophy for now. But right after this break, uh, we'll ease it down. I won't be so harsh on him, even though I should have won. Uh, we'll talk more about Coach Shaw's uh, coaching legacy, what he's done so far at Calhoun County and his current Cougars team. Welcome back to the show. We got Marcus Shaw of Calhoun County, the 21-2 and two Cougars out in Edison. Uh, this is his eighth season coaching the Cougars. Correct. As well as you're a former Cougar yourself. Uh, how does it feel, first, before we get into the questions, how does yeah. it feel to be – leading that team right now as well as they're doing. Oh, it feels great. A dream, a dream come true. It feels great. Of course, of course. Now, let's talk about a, a date that you probably don't really like so much. doesn't feel as great. March right. 8, 2017. That was last year. That was the end of your basketball season. You, right. you lost to Wilkinson County in the 2017 Single A Public State Championship game. Uh, what did you guys learn from that, and what does the angst from that loss give the team as energy this year? Well, we learned a lot. I mean, the road to the championship game was tough. Uh, a lot of hard fought battles there. We um, wound up Fortunately, was able to overcome, but um, just the experience from that whole season, especially the playoff run, we're looking to gain, take what we learned from that experience and um, hopefully win the title this year. What was the, some of the chatter like this uh, this off season, you know, with, with some of the players? Was there a, a different kind of vibe to the team this year? It was. It seemed like all the kids were more focused. Um, came into the gym um, willing, to run, um, willing to work harder, you mm-hmm. know, just the inspiration we received from having the loss. Of course, we all want to win the state championship, but we didn't. So just the, just the motivation there, definitely um, the key factor for us. Now, as a coach, you've done both. You won a state title and you lost one. Was it easier for you to motivate guys this year, or, or was it more easier the year after the state championship victory mm-hmm. in 2015 um, to get them ready for the season? Oh, easier this year. Hands down, easier this year. Um, sour taste left in our mouths. Of course, um, state championship game, of course, we all know we came up short. So um, all our kids um, have bought in and wanted to work hard. They actually made phone calls to me, Coach, let's get in the gym. We have to win it this year. So that's, that's definitely um, this year more easier. That's big. That's big. And, that's, and, you know, of course, they're probably proud of you right now. And Edison, and something you're probably proud of is the senior class you got, the class of 2018, 
uh, led by Rayshon Williams, and, and I'm se sure several other guys, yeah. you can give the name drops uh, to them that are still with you. But right. they won that state championship their freshman year. Now they're in their senior year. What has right. that class meant to you? Oh, that class meant a whole lot. Rashawn Williams, Kadarius Holmes, mm -hmm. two of the three seniors we have right now on the team, both of those guys played as freshmen. And um, just having them around, they learned from the older guys when they were freshmen, and now they're returning a favor and teaching our younger guys the ropes. And I'm um, just coming every day to work hard and just lead by example. They've done an excellent job and just hope we can carry on. Right. Now, you obviously played in the, in the, in the red and blue yourself in Edison. Right. You graduated 2001. What is it like now being the coach? You know, you were probably getting yelled at right. like growing up in Edison. Now you're yelling at them on the other side. What's it like being in your hometown? Like I said, it's a dream come true. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Having a chance to come back and work with my hometown. Um, it's definitely been great. The fan support been great. Knowing everyone in the community. Um, I couldn't ask for anything else. Now, was it tough, though? Is it tough at all? Because I know everybody's like, oh, that's Marcus right there, man. Right. You know, we gonna, hey, he better he better win the game. We're going to get him. Like, you know, right. it's family. You got everybody right there with you. What are some right. of the challenges that come with uh, being there? Well, actually, I haven't really had any challenges. Um, like I said, I enjoyed every moment of it. Um, just having to we'll work with so many great kids, young kids, and um, been knowing most of them ever since they was born. And this definitely being a key factor that I enjoyed every single day, just getting a chance to try to make these kids better and um, be successful. That's the main thing. And I'm sure success helps it all. I mean, if you, if you were going 0-20 each year, right, right. it might be a little tougher. But, you know, 6-20 win seasons, right. uh, seven playoff appearances. I'm sure the fans are loving you back home. <laughs> now, you didn't get there on your own, obviously. Nobody does. Right. Uh, so many people draw from inspirations. I, myself, and many of the coaches across South Georgia. Right. For you, what, who inspires you and who kind of influenced your coaching style? Well, um, I've been had, fortunate. Um, I've been up under a great, lot of great coaches. Um, starting my high school years, playing up under Coach uh, Rufus Williams. I went to my um, college days, I'm under Randolph Barstale at George Saul Wilson and Mike Leader. Mm. I went to my coaching days, starting off early at Randolph Clay High School, up under the legendary Coach Joe Williams. Yeah. I mean, it's an honor every day just to get a chance to go work around a legend and see how he operates on a daily basis and the game preparation from game to game there. And um, Coach Ty Tyrone Kellogg, yeah. he's been great as well. So for you, I mean, do you feel like you would be at this point in your, in your career at, at such a young age had it not been for them? Or Definitely not. Definitely not. You know, I try to learn as much as I can from um, every coach I have the opportunity to converse with. And um, over the years, that, that's one thing, adding different things from different coaches. And, you know, Lee, so far, we just continue to try to grow as a staff and, and get to where we need to be. Just, yeah, well, hopefully you're being that guy to the assistants you got on your staff. Now, right. we'll, we'll see about that in a few years when they go off and get jobs. Right. Now, we're going to stick around. We're going to come right back to you after the break, and we're going to talk a little bit about the team's chances this year as well as your playing career as a, as a Cougar. So stay okay. tuned. Welcome back to the show. Theo Dorsey, Marcus Shaw of Calhoun County, uh, the 21 and 2 Cougars, uh, and we went back and, and we're going to redact that tie from the trivia because Mike just poked his head in and said, I was right. Argentina right. won it in 04. So I appreciate you allowing me to, to take that back. It was important. Yeah. So we're going to mark that up. Make sure when y'all doing the standings, y'all mark that up as a win. Now, speaking of winning, you, you've done a lot as a coach. You also play ball in Edison. Before Correct. we get into the team you have right now, I mean, if, as a coach, what would you have approved about your game when you played from about 97 to 2001 at Edison? How would you be on yourself as a player? I would definitely uh, rip more ball, Helen. Yeah. Um, more, more soon, definitely. Um, I felt I was a pretty decent player, but it's always room for improvement. And I know what I know now, I've definitely been a much better player than what I was in high school. Even though I felt I was pretty decent, I could have been better. Would you have been able to start on this Calhoun County team, or would you have been one of those bench riders to, uh, or come in, maybe even come in when the, the game's over with? Which one would you have been? Oh, definitely. I would have been the man. I would have started. Oh. This started. <laughs> oh, okay, we're going to see what your, what your players think right. about that. Well, let's speak of your players. You guys are really good this year. at 21-2, and two, um, right. one of the favorites coming into the year, still one of the favorites in single-A public. How do you feel the team is progressing? Where do you think they are now? We are. Uh, we definitely have um, got better as the season went on, and um, hopefully we continue to grow. Um, um, we understand every single night we're in the gym, we must work to get better. And um, region tournament starts next week, so we just continue trying to add on. At this point in the season, we want to be clicking. And that's our main focus every day. Just trying to get our offenses down, defenses down. We want to be in sync in everything we do. So we just try to get everything clicking for region tournament time and state tournament time. And what's the goal for 2018? Definitely state championship. That's the ultimate goal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll be along the journey the whole way to see if you guys are able to accomplish that goal. Let's take a quick look before we go um, and talk, before I send you off. I want to tell the fans where to go on Saturday night because Westover at America Sumter, the Patriots and the Panthers are going to be the pack the stands game of the week. They're fighting to see who will host the region. That game could be very pivotal. The girls game will tip at 6, the boys at 7.30. See you in Americas in the Panther pit or the Panther gym. I forgot what they call it, but it's pretty cool out there. Now, Coach, thank you again for joining us. Uh, good time. luck to the Calhoun County team and have a good one. Thanks so much. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.